um, about our sport, rugby league. The great thing about the way that people like me played the game is is there's a, there's a group of us and we all know who we are. And if we crop up, if you sort of come across somebody's name, somebody like Paul Siren, and I've got in touch with him, we've had a few internet conversations uh, uh, you, you sort of you have that unwritten bond. You, you, you might not have ever had a conversation, but if but if I see somebody, yeah. I'll, I'll sort of reach out to him. And, and Quentin was was somebody who I reached out when he was really poorly. Um, Dave Thurner was at was at the Rhinos. Uh, what year would that be? Twenty two thousand three, two thousand four. No, sorry, sorry. Oh. Coach. He was the co- he was the coach of, of the final last year, early last year. Last year, uh, that's when Q died, and sort of I was pes- passing messages through Dave, and you know it was really sad to see how uh, how how quickly his light faded, and and before you know it, he was gone. And I remember seeing a photograph of him as a as a very very poorly man with a with a just a real sad look on his face and it's it's one of those times where you think you know we, we're only here for a little look and we were chatting before we started about Rob Burrow we're only here for a little look so to uh, to do the thing you enjoy doing yeah and to do it at a really high level is is a blessing and, uh, and I'm very grateful for that I think that's the thing about you prop forwards especially your kind of rough house ones. <laughs> they, do, they do put yeah. everything into doing as much as they can I talk I talk a bit sometimes about the players I gravitate towards <laughs> being the ones who put in every bit of effort they've got to get absolutely everything they can out of their ability um, and, and I think that sort of all the short stocky prop forwards you've mentioned are the kind of blokes who fans gravitate towards because yeah, of that yeah what I about do, the guys that na- what about the guys that now as a, as a pundit you, you, you look at and you think god I, I'm glad I don't have to play against him well, unfortunately, Mark, I have still not got that voice in me, ba- in, in the back of my mind that says, Barry, you're 48 year old. What I've got is I've got right at the front of my mind the one that says, you're 28 year okay. old and you can deal with anybody so, that so steps forward. I don't think that. So the question is, which of the prop forwards at the moment do you want to look, do you want to try and get r- roughed up amongst, I, I suppose, well, isn't it? Do you know what, mate? When I'm, when I'm on the mic and I'm watching the games, I've still got that in my mind thinking, will somebody give it him? Will somebody give him a crack and knock him back? <laughs> and, uh, no, I, there's, there's players that are playing now that I think I would love to play alongside him and, and be the sort of the complementary prop forward. I, I think Alec, big, big Alex Wormsley's a great player. Luke Thompson's a great player. Ben Flower, when he was in his pomp, um, was a great player. He suffered a little bit with injuries, but I thought Benny Flower, uh, two or three years ago, was as, was as good as anything I'd, I'd watched. And I liked the way that he carried the ball forward found his front was never flipped on his back all those little nuances that as a front rower I look at and I think you've got that just about right but uh, I I think Wormsley and Watts are the only two tall ones you've talked about so far you you do gravitate towards the ones your sort of stature I suppose that you identify with how they get involved on the pitch yeah (laughs) I know know, I was talking about the evolution of a front rower in in my day front rowers were front rowers there were there were one there was always one that was over six foot who, who had eight? One that was under six front foot, who had ten on, and that sort of that slant in the front row, yeah, you're slant right, in the scrum yeah. allowed the nine to get the ball. Yeah, O'Connor and Cowie in the first grand final. Yeah. <laughs> that sort yeah. of year, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so people like Moz, Adrian Morley, and JP were always back rowers, and they were only ever back rowers until the game got quicker, and the game got a, a, a different sort of uh, energy system. So, front rowers. Um, became bench players. JP's Back probably a, a good one. From JP's probably a good one to sort of finish on, isn't he? Because he's kind of the man who replaced you at Leeds, isn't he, in that number 10 yeah. shirt? Yeah, absolutely. Great lad, JP. I mean, um, I have a tremendous amount of respect, and I think that number 10 shirt at Leeds has, has, had, uh, has had people who've been there for a long time and given great service, and both JP and I have given 10 years, and uh, it'd be nice to see... As as we do, so when uh, Brad Singleton got the number ten, 
Fletcher, I'd pop him a text, and I know JP pop him a text. Cuthbertson, when when he had number ten, um, we'd we'd sort of. I think there's a there's a nice little club there that we've got going. That when somebody else inherits that number, uh, we make sure we pass our best on. So who do you think so next then, Young Mikulajski maybe? I think Mikulaj's got a great chance. I think Mikulaj's got to grow into that that enormous body of his um, when when I was at the Rhinos he was only a very young player coming through the scholarship and I like the fact that he wanted to he wanted to hit people and he wanted to hurt them and I, I thought that if he could maintain that throughout the grades and, and in the open age set up in the first team then he'd have a great chance but it's sort of as front rowers you, you, you get told that you won't hit your peak until you're 26, 27, 28 and you, you sort of scoff at that and think no, I'm, I'm 19, 18 <laughs> and I'm as strong as an ox and I'll do it now but it's true because you don't have the experience, you've, you've got a great body, you've got a, a powerful asset but you don't always know how you, best to use it and I think Mikolai is in the middle of that now, he's, he's learning how best to use that, that potential and that talent that he's got Well he's one of lots that are sort of coming through now at that, that young age who are three or four years off the peak but we've got some something to be excited about as we've always had in this country about our yeah. path forward so, I yeah. like Ethan Avard you know I know you're a Wigan fan oh, I, I like Ethan Avard I like yeah. Oliver Partington I, I bumped into Oliver Partington as you as you'll probably know Oliver Russell Ollie Russell is an Oldham lad and, and son of um uh, son of Richard Russell um, who's an ex-teammate of mine so for Ollie Russell's 21st um Ollie Partington and a lot of those academy lads came over and, and had a night out and I had a good chat with Ollie then and I, I sort of give him a, a few words of wisdom it, it, it was at a time where he was rubbing players heads yeah. and, and pushing and sort of all that bullshit stuff that that you know, can come across as over excitement, but if you're not careful, can bite you on the bum because somebody might turn around and give give you a clip. But I suspect he's like me. He's like of your mould. <laughs> he, he reminds he me of you. The hard way. He does remind me of you, Oliver Partington. So yeah, yeah. that's a good shout. Well, that's a great yeah. place to leave it on. Thanks for your insight, Barry. It's always great to chat to you, and uh, and I'm sure everyone will look forward to hearing some more of your podcast as well that you now get out most most days of the week. I know, no, I've got another one tomorrow with. Uh, Matt Lewis of um, uh, Harry Potter fame, who's a, who's a massive um, Rhinos fan, so looking forward to, to that. But so, so when listen people to listen, to, listen to this, that'll be already out last week, so that's a good one for Leeds fans to go and check out for definite, definite on the uh, Golden Point Daily. <laughs> All good, mate, and listen, you keep up the great work, as long as as long as long we're getting the message of, of Rugby League out, the more, the more avenues we can get down, the better, and uh, as I said, I always enjoy listening to it Monday or Tuesday in the car, so great stuff. Thanks, Barry. No worries, pal. So thanks again to Barry McDermott for his uh, for his input there, and um, he he gave a shout out to his future recording of a of a podcast episode that's already been aired. But um, definitely go and check out the uh, the what's it called Golden Point Daily podcast, and that episode he spoke about, which was out on Friday, with the actor from uh, Neville Longbottom from the Harry Potters. That was a really good episode. So uh, do go and and check that one out in particular but um ask barry talked uh, in great detail about and far more knowledgeable about the position and the people who played it than, than than us but we're the fans and we want to have our say as well so we're going to talk about our favorite prop forwards um as well and i suppose uh, ask the as the guest fan on the show john we should give you the first uh, the first talk here before we talk through some of the other fan views that we've had in so who, who for you has stood out as prop forwards? What, what, who are your favourite players, past and present, in that position? Oh, okay. Um, I, um, I, I noted a few down. I, I, I thought like sort of out of today's sort of players, ones Lee Thompson and those guys are, are all kind of obvious a little bit. Yeah. Um, so I tried to think a bit more. Uh, um, uh, not outside the box, I guess, because everyone's heard of him. Oh yeah, we um, need to go it, down the list a bit outside of those two. That, that's for certain. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Short conversation, it, otherwise, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's always a bit difficult to, to stand out as a prop, I think, because it's it's not really the sort of flashy position, is it? It's always that sort of traditional grafter that just gets on and does the hard work. And um, I think so it's you've harder got... to stand out now that they're not allowed to fight as much. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You look look back. Well, look look back only, only a handful of years really, and it was um, no, it was, it was still uh, a big part of it, wasn't it? The kind of enforcer sticking up the halfbacks. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so yeah, kind of. I think you know, and then more recently, you've got that sort of new school of prop that can ball play a little bit and has, has got kind of a pair of hands on them as well, rather than just a, you know, a battering ram. So, um, so yeah, obviously, like Adrian Morley and Peacock and Taylor and Watts and Chris Hill, and those guys kind of as the older mould of um, you know just big battering rams who are there to stop big blokes running at them and run at other big blokes. Uh, and then you've got sort of Grant Millington, Adam Cuthbert's and those ones who have got a bit more of a... Um, Frustrated halfbacks. Uh, yeah, 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 <laughs> fat halfbacks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, James Graham. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and those kind of guys, really. Uh, so, so yeah, that, 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 that's kind of what I've got. And then I've just noted down a, a special mention for, for Tony Club for gradually moving forward and taking his time to get the prop. Always love to see a, a winger move gradually forward. And then uh, Takiyaho is, in them. Um, to be fair, the it's NRL. normally the the thing that you that you see in the amateur game, isn't it? So like the the guy who was the the kid on the wing at seventeen, when he's still at playing for the same amateur club at thirty seven, is is the prop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Tony <laughs> Clubs managed to carve that out for him at the Super League level. <laughs> yeah, didn't, didn't he put a little little chip through as well earlier this year, and uh, and found himself out in the wing making the last gasp tackle. Was it early this year or late last year as well? There was last so year the cover expected. tackle he made on Ratu Nulongo last year. That's it, was, yeah, uh... yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is he doing? He's having a rest there, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Takiaho, who plays for the Roosters, just, just because you know, everyone loves the goal-kicking prop. Another another legacy of days gone by. I felt like yeah, exactly, so many yeah. goal kicking props back in the day, but nowadays yeah. the, the, the few and far between. I tell you one thing though, he's the longest. He takes the longest to kick a goal of any. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a great shout, actually. That's that's a really good shout. We could even fall down that line of goal kicking um, front rowers. Craig Huby was probably the last one of real repute that I remember in the, in the Super League. Obviously, um, Lee Crooks is is a famous former goal-kicking prop. And um, yeah. going further back in time, I suppose Don Fox uh, is another very famous goal-kicking front-rower. Yeah. That's that's cool. So what what so I suppose then the only real Leeds names you mentioned there were, were Peacock and Cuthbertson. So uh, in, in uh, all of Morley. that, Morley was quite good. Yeah. So who's your I guess who's who's the best you think you've ever seen for Leeds? Um, for me, for me, it's probably Peacock. Really, um, Morley was probably. A little bit, you know, I wasn't really around as much then and, and didn't see as much rugby. No, and he was more though, a second rower, um, weren't he, I suppose, in those days. I, I think, yeah, I think um, it, it's, it's really blurred lines, isn't it? Because, well, actually looking down this list, then no, it's not, because loads of them just play eight or ten. <laughs> There's only a few that have... <laughs> yeah, forget um, it is weird that transition, and and uh, Barry spoke a little bit about it about how there was that period where you saw the move from the older older period prop to the current athletic um, props, and yeah. uh, and so you needed more smaller body guys playing in the props now, whereas you wouldn't have you'd always have a a, a, a fat guy and a tall guy in the olden yeah. days is kind of like the easiest way to say it. <laughs> I went with the game changing with like the interchanges coming down as well. You can't just have you know, huge, huge men and when when they need to be played longer and longer minutes because they're gonna be not gonna be as effective after after ten or fifteen minutes on the pitch. Yeah, you're right. The days of the awesome foursome that I'm sure Alan will want to talk about a kind of um when it was twelve interchanges and it didn't matter how many times Joe Vangana needed to go off. <laughs> they're kind of gone those days aren't they yeah it's funny isn't it because cause if you go back far enough there were substitutions not interchanges yeah so if you go back to kind of you know 60s 70s 80s kind of even the early props, 90s I don't think I think the like you could come back on rules weren't universal in the sport until maybe 94 95 
Yeah, exactly. So, so you've seen this, you know, you, you're completely right that that period where there was a huge number of interchanges, the bodies of the kind of props changed and they became, you know, bigger and, you know, a little bit, you know, soft around the middle, maybe in some cases. Um, and now, now they've gone back the other way. So they're, they are much leaner and they're more, you know, they are more interchangeable with other, other positions in the pack, I think. Yeah, exactly. Sh- sh- 